Welcome back to the Fostering Financial Victories podcast. This is episode four. I am Eric Mazel. I'm your host for today, and I am joined by Courtney Bowman. Hey. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me here. So this is going to be a a little different discussion than we've ever had on this show so far. Um, So we're actually going to break this up into a two-part series just to make it a little more um, consumable. And the first episode that we want to talk about is, you know, why do people need to be talking about Mm -hmm. the the aging uh, society? Um, I think it's a pretty big, um, almost an epidemic that could be coming as the baby boomer generation continues to get older and retiring. Mm -hmm. Um, The planning side of this is obviously a big deal. And the impact of either doing it really well or not doing it well is pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. So we hope that this will be beneficial for everybody who's listening to where you can take some of this topic that we're talking about today and maybe apply it to a discussion with your parents or with a loved one that you may have this discussion with. So Courtney has over 12 years of experience working Mm -hmm. with senior citizens in various capacities. So Mm -hmm. that's a topic we're gonna talk a lot about today, kind of the aging in your home and what options are out there and how people can approach this this discussion. Right. Um, So you own Senior Helpers of Greenville Mm -hmm. as well as SeniorshipIt.com. Yes. Okay, so you take your business and you start helping the discussion around dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, kind of educating people on what they need to know about those diseases, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how you got into that Mm -hmm. um, and and kind of where that has taken you so far. How I got into it. Yeah. So um, before I started Senior Helpers, I, I did work for a hospice company for a little bit. Okay. And, um, and that was when I was living in Atlanta. And through that, I met one of the senior helpers owners. Um, we were doing a marketing thing one morning in a, in a nurse's station. And I was just asking him a lot of questions about the in-home care industry. And, um, and it's, it's, such a, it's such a great service for a lot of people who are aging in place and who want to age in place and don't want to go into an assisted living or whatever they choose to do. But um, so it was just very, I was intrigued by it and, and just wanted to know more about it. So that's how I got into it and decided to buy Senior Helpers um, of Greenville. It's a franchise. Okay. We have 300 across the United States. So Okay. Right. So. All right, so first things first, the sandwich generation. Right. What What is that? So what we call the sandwich generation, that really is, I think, individuals between the ages of, I mean, it could even be 40 to 65 who still have, who have aging parents. And, um, and so what happens is, is a lot of times, and this is really the sad thing about as we age is, Parents and their children really don't have the conversation of what their wishes are um, as they age. Like, mom, what do you want to do? I mean, do you do you ever want to go to assisted living, or do you want to remain home, or you know? And so they get caught into that generation called the sandwich generation, where we feel responsible for what's going on. And what happens is, is a lot of time there's a crisis. Somebody will fall, they'll end up in the hospital, then they'll end up in a rehab center, and the, the, the children, who would be us, are scrambling to try to figure out what to do. Well, we've never looked into a senior helpers, nor do we even know what it is, and so we don't really know who to call and, you know, how do we handle the situations when they come up in a crisis situation. So, so the, the person that would fall into this is they're going to have young kids. So they're going to be distracted by that at home. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to have an elderly parent, potentially that they're on the hook for either helping them financially or physically or Mm -hmm. just being there emotionally. Mm -hmm. So that's that person. Um, Okay. So that's a big big group of people. That's that's me. Yeah, Yeah. you and I have talked about that. And and you and I are in totally different situations because, like for me, my my dad passed away early. So my mom realized that, you know what, because she and I had to go through a lot of stuff to figure out where things are and, you know, what do we do next? And so she and I sat down and I know, you know, who, who where her 401ks are or where her long-term care insurance is or sure. what bank she uses. We've had that conversation. But but so many 
people who fall under that sandwich generation have not had that with their parents. So do you think that's the biggest issue that most people are faced with when something like that happens with a parent to where they just don't know what to do or won't, don't know what they want to do? Yeah, have done? It, it really is because, um, you know, the phone calls that I do get at Senior Helpers when I'm there is from somebody in that sandwich generation. They're like, my mom is getting ready to get out of rehab. They're Medicare is releasing her in two days and we just found this out and we have no idea what to do. She wants to go home, but her house is not really appropriate for safety. I mean, yeah. she doesn't have bars next to the tub or, you know, and that kind of stuff. Okay. And that's where, so a lot of times they are in a crisis so situation. If, if So people that are listening to this, um, if you could take one thing out of this discussion already would be, mm -hmm. hey, ask your parents what they want to have done. Is that? <laughs> well, just, just, you know, casually, just <laughs> it's through, a tough the, conversation, you know, through right? the year or whatever, just say, you know, do you want to stay at home? Yeah. Is that, you know, especially if they're like 70 to 80 years old, that's when you sometimes, like my mother's bathroom, she needs safety bars. But okay. I, I haven't really had that discussion, but I probably will say, hey, let my... Let Robbie, my husband, come down and let's go ahead and put those in just in case okay. something happens and then they're there. And so, you know, I know that that's one less thing that I have to worry about or deal with. Yeah, so you've probably seen a lot of different stories that have come through your door with your business mm -hmm. to where you could say yeah, that that was done really well. Like mm -hmm. they, they planned this out, you know, very well. Or you could say the, op the opposite, I would think. Mm -hmm. that maybe that's more so than not. Right. To where it's, everybody's in panic mode right. trying to figure out what direction to go and fix mm -hmm. this issue. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that is a, like a commonality for the ones who had done the planning really well that people could take from that and say, hey, okay, those are two or three points that maybe I should use those to start with? Right. I, I, I don't really feel like I've met anybody who's done it well because it's the unknown. You That's know, not we, good. we really know what we're gonna. <laughs> we don't know what's gonna happen to us. But it's just, you know, aging in America is just a conversation that people just don't have. I mean, nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to deal with it. It's just one of those conversations that people just don't have. But um, you know, I, I think the the people who had the hardest time are the the children of the the mom and dad who just absolutely will not talk to them about money about their wishes about anything because usually the parents just don't want to burden the kids is what they're thinking but what happens is is if something happens to those parents then the kids are in crisis they're burdened there's a lot of there's just a lot of yeah. unknown answers that they have to deal with and it's I could agree with that. So being in a financial planning world, mm -hmm. um, I could say that a lot of discussions that come up about, you know, the long-term care type yeah. uh, scenario, right? especially with somebody who is maybe in my generation or your generation, and they're not really thinking about that yet for themselves. Right. And then you ask, have you talked to your parents or if they're still alive, what, what are they going to do from a planning standpoint if this happens to one of them? And you usually either get a kind of deer in the headlight look mm -hmm. like like you're just saying mm -hmm. they, they just haven't discussed it right whether or not it's just an uncomfortable conversation or it's awkward or the mm -hmm. parents really just don't want to explain it to them right I, right I guess it's probably a combination of all of it it is and I mean when I go in and do assessments and I meet with a family that that does you know their their mom may need help that's the first thing I ask I'm like do you have a long-term care policy because that long-term care policy really does um, help pay, especially for our types of service. Okay. Um, so it saves, you know, you've paid into it for a long time, so you, it's a use it or lose it situation. So you need to use it. And you need to use it when you're still kind of healthy, but still need a little bit of help around the house. That's when I always say to bring in a senior helpers. Okay. Um, don't, don't try not to have this when it's crisis, because then everybody's just running around trying to figure out what to do. But anyway, um, you know, the long-term care policy, I, I preach that to everybody I do an assessment with. Even the children, the, the sandwich generation kids, I'm like, do y'all have a long-term care oh, policy? No, she's because, trying to sell us insurance. <laughs> you know, you don't want, nobody really wants their children yeah. to have to take tons of care, you know, okay. forms though. So the, the society is a, in, in the United States is mm -hmm. getting older. Okay, mm -hmm. so what do you see as some of the common reasons why people will start to need care? Like, is it a certain illness? Is it certain mm -hmm. motor functions? What is it that's usually the, the dominating factor? Um, for me and what I have seen in the past 12 years, I mean, dementia is definitely on the rise in America. I don't know what 
causes dementia. Sometimes I do think it's genetic, but also I think it's sometimes things that we're exposed to. Um, but we, you know, I would say probably 65% of our clients do have dementia. Some sort of mental... Some type of dementia, okay. yes. Um, we also see Parkinson's um, and then just people who fall. That's a, that's a, the biggest thing too. People just literally, um, as we age, our bones get more brittle <laughs> and you can just turn around and all of a sudden you're on the floor because a lot of them are like, I don't know what happened, you know? Yeah, well, so. you know, you start thinking about what are the odds where somebody's going to need this type of assistance to any level, right? Mm -hmm. And there's various degrees of um, help that can be available to them. Right. From a, you know, somebody's coming in and checking on them to mm -hmm. a 24-hour nursing care. Right. What Do you think there are any proven statistics that say, all right, if you're over the age of 65, what, mm -hmm. what are the odds that you are going to fall into that? Do you know? Um, I feel like 65, just being in this business, is young to me now. 65 is still a young yeah. age. I really think it's now it's like 75 and over. But um, when I think if you ever have where you feel like your parents are, you just are kind of sensing something's wrong, especially with dementia, sometimes the children can realize it. And actually, the person who, who is getting the dementia knows it as well. They know that they're getting something. That's when you really want to start to try to introduce a caregiver because with dementia, you're only going to decline over time. And with that disease, I mean, people forget to take their medicine or they forget to, to hydrate, which, which will then cause dehydration, which can send you in the hospital. And it's not really a physical thing either. It's, uh, it's more of, so I mean, it can last for quite a long time. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the, the physical you know, decline may not right. be there. Right. So right. I think that's another piece that you and, take, and that's, it's still pretty active. That's the tricky thing about dementia is with dementia, your mind goes, but physically you're still good. You right. can still good. run three miles, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's why it's tricky because, you know, you may have your mother saying, I don't need help. But in reality, they probably do need a companion just to be there with them. So with that type of situation... Do you see the level of care, like how does it typically advance um, if, if you've got a family that they're starting to experience some mental uh, decline there? How, how quickly or is there any kind of rhyme or reason okay, as so to what happens? Let me say this care? first. I've never met a senior that says, yes, I need help. Come on in, <laughs> senior helpers. <laughs> every senior that I have dealt with or every client that I've dealt with has said, I don't need help. And so how I approach the situation and how I would say for children to approach the situation is to say, mom or dad, let's just try it. And that's the, the beauty about in-home care is we can be there for one day a week. Right. We can be there for two days a week, or we can be there for 24 hours around the clock. Um, we even do like a live-in situation where we'll have a caregiver that will live with somebody. So this may start off to where you have somebody just coming in for an hour or two at mm -hmm. a time just mm -hmm. to check on a person mm -hmm. and then gradually they may need more assistance and, and more over guidance. time then we'll just you know increase the hours but our our main goal is to develop a relationship between the the client and the caregiver so who who really is the first person to reach out generally is it the the spouse of someone who is starting to have some need or is it a child from their, the their family? Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're seeing it and saying, hey, mom and dad need some issues. Yeah, because again, help. like I said, no senior is going, I, I rarely have the actual client call us and say, we need help. They just, so, I don't know what it is. We just. So as the child or the, you know, the, the adult child, I guess mm -hmm. you would say, it's mm -hmm. kind of odd to say that. Yeah. But, you know, you think through this, if I'm calling for one of my parents to say, mm -hmm. hey, Courtney, I think one of my parents need to have some, some help around the house. Mm -hmm. What are a few things that you're going to ask me to have in place before we could even go down that road of discussion? There, and this is another good thing. There really isn't a ton of stuff that you have to have in place. The first thing I always say is, do they have a long-term care policy? Because okay. it, cause it, it helps. It makes a difference sure. financially um, because this is a private pay. I don't know if we'll get into that later, but yeah, this is will. a private pay um, service. Um, but um, there, there isn't a whole lot because really what I want to do as the person who does the assessment, 
I just want to get in the home and see what's going on okay. because I can tell a lot on what's going on if they're starting to hoard, you know. So would I have to have any sort of authorization, uh, like a power of attorney or things along those lines no, to, to, not to start necessarily, that? not necessarily. Not necessarily with us. I mean, we just have a conversation with the client and the, ch and the adult child. And then if they say, you know what, let's just try somebody, then the... The parent will usually just sign yep. the agreement saying, yeah, we're going to start this service. Or the child can sign for them. They okay. don't have to necessarily be the power of attorney. So what you guys do is more of a custodial care. Mm -hmm. Tell me the other end of the spectrum. So what's the difference in that and uh, someone coming in that actually is medically driven from that perspective? Is there... Is there a big difference? Do you mean someone who like needs a, a lot of medical like, attention? Yeah, so okay. somebody who's got... So, you know, so in-home care is considered a non-skilled service. Okay. So, and a lot of people don't understand this, but when, when you, let's say you break a hip, your mother breaks a hip, she will leave the hospital and automatically be sent usually to a um, home health, like an NHC home health um, place. They will rehab her, meaning they'll do physical therapy and occupational therapy for like 20 days. Okay. Used to be for 30 and 60 days, but with Medicare, they've cut that down to right. 20 days. So after a person gets out of rehab, they're really going to need more help. They, they can't just walk out of there and they need help getting in and out of the shower. They need help. Um, someone just cooking for them changing the sheets on their bed, um, cleaning out the refrigerator when they do get back home, when they return home, so stuff not, like that. That's not the skilled care end of it then. So that's not someone right. from a, a medical professional coming in and doing that type of work. So cost-wise, it's going to be pretty significantly different. And, and I want to say this too so that people understand this because this is, this is one of the me medical myths that people don't understand. When you are released from a, um, a like an NHC and home health, then um, home health will follow you home for another 20 days. And that's where a nurse, a certified nursing assistant, a PT and an OT will stop in. They'll pop in and spend about 45 minutes with you doing like the physical therapy and the occupational therapy just so that they're making sure you're rehabbing. We're doing all the getting you to the doctor's visits, getting you in and out of the shower safely. The stuff that your adult children cooking probably for would you. Be doing. The stuff that the children end up having to do that they do not have time to do yeah, because they're it. raising children and they okay. have jobs. And so um, as older couples are getting, getting into this aging mm -hmm. in, a, in their home discussion, what types of things do they need to have prepared from a documentation perspective if things go like crisis mode? Right. So <clears throat> this is, again, where you had that conversation. If there are two children, I know you're an only child. Yep. And um, most people really with their, with their parents, they need to be the power of attorney for medical and for finance. Okay. So if there's, like you would really need to be the power of attorney for your mother for both. Now, if there's two kids or if there's three kids, somebody can be the power of attorney for medical, somebody can be the power of attorney for finances. So there's sometimes that we'll deal with the child who's in, in, you know, responsible for the medical to make the decisions to get in-home care. And then I'll have to turn around and call the person who is responsible for the financial to take care of how this is all paid. It's a little more cumbersome when you have mm -hmm. two people involved or more. It is, yeah. but I get it too. If you have two children, you kind of want, you know, to let them be responsible for different things. Okay. Okay. So when you start talking about care options mm -hmm. that are available and, you know, again, the different levels of need. Mm -hmm. So you've got the custodial care, the, you know, the, the in-home pop in, help you out for a few hours. Then you've got somebody that's, that's in your house all day long. Mm -hmm. That would be more like the skilled care, I would assume. And then it, how, how does it great? How does it go up from there? Does it go to from the, the person that's in your house taking care of you on a, a medical basis, like mm -hmm. a, a nurse that's in your house, mm -hmm. is, is now is the next step an assisted living facility or is there any Not in necessarily, between? no. With, with home health, you, you will have a nurse assistant, but, but she's only gonna come in for about 20 minutes, check on you, check all your vitals, make sure you're doing okay. They're not there all the time. We really are the group that's there all the time. Okay. If they need us, it, I mean, some people may only need three hours. Some pe people may need around the clock when they get out of rehab just for a week or two, just to see how they're doing at night. See, are they getting up two and three times 
a night to go to the restroom because that's when we're going to see another fall. And, you know, now with this, um, this program at the hospital, they really, are, you really don't want to return to the hospital within 30 days of leaving um, a rehab center or the hospital because, you know, people get deemed, the hospitals get deemed on that kind of stuff. From their reporting from standpoint? From Medicare and, Okay, yeah. so their reimbursements are not the same as if it were past that time frame. Right. So it really is important to, you know, even if we're in the house for only 30 days, just to help them recover from whatever they're recovering from um, when they're coming out of home health, okay. if it is a broken hip. Then. So I guess, why do people, in your, your opinion, mm -hmm. um, why do the older couples typically avoid all topics with this? Is it um, unsure about what to do? Is mm -hmm. it, what is it? Okay, there's two things. Okay. Number one is they do not want anybody in their house. <laughs> okay, they want to do it themselves maybe? <laughs> Number two, they don't want to spend the money. It's always, okay. I mean, they want to hold on to that money so that they can pass it down and I understand that, you know. But <clears throat> your health and your independence are huge and you know we've had one client a lady that we've had for nine years and she needs a companion but that companion still gets her out and takes her to the Y so that she can walk takes her to get her hair done takes her twice a week to go get lunch she's still keeping her independent and keeping her mind going and and that's really what that companion is there for what do you see the impact on <clears throat> families when they don't seek help do you ever get that? Do you ever see that part of it? Um, yeah, maybe, I the, do. maybe like the cleanup of that. Um, because I can speak to that a little bit from what I've seen personally. So yeah. I don't know, I've, yeah. I've shared this with you. From the time I was a little kid, there's always mm -hmm. been somebody in one side of my family or the other that has had some sort of a need for mm -hmm. a, for a caregiver, whether right. it's in the home or whether it's in a facility. Right. Still to this day. Mm -hmm. So. What I've noticed, though, is that, you know, we're in the South and everybody thinks, well, my family will take care of me and they'll just, you know, they'll buck up and, and mm -hmm. we'll do it. Mm -hmm. the, the fracturing that takes place, I think, in the relationships within the family dynamic is often overlooked and not expected to happen. And right. I think that, to me, was the biggest eye-opener when I started to see that happen within my own family of, man, these... Nobody really likes each other right now because everybody's on edge and the right, stress is right. uber high and they don't really want to be around each other. And, 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 and it is very stress, stressful. There is something called caregiver burnout. Um, and that's a true, true thing. It, it just causes a lot of anxiety um, and, and it's stressful. And so that's another reason that I say, you know, bring someone in that, that is not a part of the family because what will happen is is that client and the caregiver will, will become friends and that caregiver will want to ask them all the questions about their family that y'all have heard a million times. Sure. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and, and that's one thing we'll talk about later with dementia is, you know, our caregivers are also trained to listen to those stories a billion times and not get frustrated. You know, it's not their mom, so it's easier to not be frustrated it's very frustrating when your parents change. They're not the same person, especially if they're dealing with a disease like dementia or Parkinson's. That's hard to watch. You get frustrated when they tell you the same thing or they don't remember something. And then you feel bad when you walk away from that situation. You're like, God, I feel awful because she cannot help it. She cannot change that person with dementia. We're the ones who have to change, you know, because she can't. So. That's why I always say, you know, just let someone come in and help you so that, you know, the family doesn't get frustrated. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you told me a story about uh, there was a couple where the one spouse started needing care. They mm -hmm. didn't seek it out. And then mm -hmm. something happened. The stress piece. I think that kind of builds on what so you're talking this about. Is, this is something that, sadly, unfortunately, the 12 years I've been doing this, I have seen this probably, I've probably seen this happen at least once a year, if not twice a year. But when uh, there's a husband and wife and one of them is dealing with dementia, most of the time, no offense, if the wife has dementia, it's usually the man that I'm dealing with who really, really is not accepting to have a caregiver come in their house and take proper care of the mother who has dementia. And when I say proper care, I mean 
making sure she's clean, making sure she's getting in and out of the shower. Do you know what I mean? Making sure she's brushing her, the hygiene part okay. of it. Um, and just getting her out and taking her to get, still get her hair done. That's like a big thing for women. And what happens is, and, the, and this is where the children have a hard time because they don't want to go against their dad. And, but, you know, I have seen where, and, and, and I, I never know how to tell this to the children. I'm like, your dad is going to be the first to pass away due to stress if he does not accept help. And it happens. And, and that's when the children are like, they, 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 their hands are tied yeah. sometimes. But that's where if, and I'm usually good about talking people into getting help because I, I use the approach. Let's just try it. Sure. Let's just see how it goes. So, okay. Anyway. All right. So let's, let's hit pause because I think we've okay. set the stage. Yeah. And then on this, the follow up episode, we're going to talk about a lot of the implementation, okay. a lot of the solutions of how can people expect to pay for these things? What yes. services are available? Right. Um, that's the first question usually for people. Yeah. So we're going to talk through a lot of that on the follow up episode to this. Okay. So I don't want to go too far down the, the into the weeds of okay. the long term care because it is a tough discussion. It is. Um, I've got a couple questions for you, but first I wanted to give everybody a planning takeaway. So this is something we try to do for every episode. Mm -hmm. I think the planning takeaway for this discussion, based on what we've talked about, would mm -hmm. be make sure that your your legal documents are in place. Yes. Do a beneficiary check on everything that has a beneficiary assignment. So life right. insurance, retirement accounts, making certain that all of that is wrapped up and in, in good order. Right. Making certain that assets are titled correctly so mm -hmm. that it doesn't get stuck into a, a courtroom decision of who gets to make a decision. Right. That, right. That's that's hard too is when you've got the you know, somebody from the law the state or whatever making decisions on where things go. And, and it delays everything. And it does happen. It does delay. A right, year, so, a year delay. And almost. the power of attorney documents, it sounds so simple, but mm -hmm. making certain that if you have parents that are that are still alive and, and you're concerned about this, making certain that they've got the proper documents in place, you know where they are, you know who the person that is the chosen power of attorney is. Mm -hmm. um, I think those would be three or four things that everybody could take you know, a 30 minute discussion and have that with either yourselves or with uh, your loved ones who you're worried mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we've got some questions we like to ask every guest on the show. Okay. You don't know what these questions are, so I'm gonna ask you th uh -oh. these. All right, okay. we're gonna have a little fun. Okay, so what is one financial mistake you learned the hard way? Mm, financial mistake I learned the hard way. I, well, First of all, my parents did not talk about finances growing up, which I wish they would have, but that just wasn't our family. We just didn't talk about that kind of stuff. They didn't really, I, I never, they didn't even have 401ks. I mean, they, they didn't start their financial plan until they were in their 40s. Um, but I'm so thankful that even, even 40 sounds late, but even 40, my mom now, you know, is set up where she's not stressed okay. every month to pay bills and stuff. So that was, I'm thankful for that. But um, I, I think that I wish I would have known more about when I first got my first job, like, because I was in corporate America for a really long time. I wish I would have known more about 401ks and had like a bigger pile of money sitting somewhere. Okay. <laughs> now that I'm at the age I'm at, like okay. that's probably one of my regrets. Okay. So as a follow-up, this is going to be very funny because... And again, that's parents talking to their it children. It is. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a discussion perspective, communication. It is. All right. Yeah. So our, our second question is going to be, if you could buy anything in the world, regardless of cost, what would it be? Oh my goodness. Regardless of cost. I mean... Now I would probably buy like real estate, what would, land or something. The, okay. Yeah. Anything in particular, anywhere. Probably like farmland. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Courtney, um, take a minute and tell everybody how they can reach out to you if they have questions, they want to know more about what your business okay. does and kind of where they can find so you. Thank so much. So Senior Helpers is you can go to www.seniorhelpers with an S .com. Um, and, and I would encourage if anybody sees this that, that is dealing with parents, is in that sandwich generation, um, there's a lot of information on our website, um, especially about dementia and Parkinson's. There's a place where you can go and we can send you like 
I think it's a, a maybe a 20 or 30 minute video about the disease. We'll get into that later, but I would definitely encourage you to do that. It's free. They email it to you instantly. Um, also, our phone number locally here is 864-757-9862. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Well, like always, if you have other questions or you want to have a deeper conversation around what we've talked about so mm -hmm. far, please reach out to one of our wealth coaches. We're happy to help facilitate that discussion. Um, if you have questions or suggestions for the podcast on content or anything you have uh, thoughts on that might make it better, please feel free to email us. You can find us at fostervictorwa.com. Uh, you can email us directly from our website. You can also find us on Instagram at Foster Victor Wealth Advisors. Um, the only last thing I'll ask you to do is just have the discussion with your parents if it's still relevant. Yes. Um, just send this to them if they are <laughs> technologically advanced enough to listen to it. Right, I know right. my parents, uh, it took a little while to get them to it's listen to these dis things. It's a hard discussion, but it will save you lots of um, stress. Cool. Well, yeah. stay tuned for the next episode where we'll talk in more detail about the implementation of this. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thanks. Information contained in this podcast was intended for general use, not to be used as specific advice. For content tailored to your personal situation, please contact one of our wealth coaches.